Hey everyone, my name is Paul Vicheski and welcome to the Real Estate Classroom YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna discuss a real estate math problem or a real estate math calculation that you have to know for your real estate exam. It's called seller proceeds from the sale. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to calculate in today's video. So let's get to it. So in today's real estate math video, I'm going to show you how to calculate seller proceeds. It is a function that you have to know as a real estate professional uh, when you're listing properties. But it's also something you have to know for your real estate exam, especially if you're taking the PSI exam. If you're taking the PSI exam, I guarantee you there's a high probability that you're going to have a question or two on calculating seller proceeds. So first of all, what is a seller proceed? Um, it is essentially just the money that the seller is going to get from the sale of their home. Hopefully, it's really just taking the total amount of credits minus the debts that the seller has to, to pay as a result of the real estate transaction. And whatever's left over is the seller net proceed. It's that money that's left over. Now, a seller net proceed can actually be negative as well. So let me give you an example. Seller sells his house for $100,000. There's $50,000 in liabilities against the house, such as uh, the mortgage needs to be paid off, the real estate commissions need to be paid, those type of things. So $100,000 minus 50, that gives the seller a net proceed, a, ne a seller net proceed of $50,000. But there are times when it's negative. So the house sells for $100,000 because that's the market value, but there are $150,000 uh, of liabilities against the property. So the seller's gonna have to bring $50,000 to the closing transaction. That's a negative proceed situation. So it can be positive or negative, all right? So my goal here with this video though is just to show you whether it's gonna end up being negative or positive, um, how to calculate that and how to process it. So let's take a look at that, uh, the processing part of this. Now understand that there are certain types of items or certain costs and certain credits that's gonna be listed on your seller proceeds statement. Credits to the seller are things that, like the sale price or the, the loan escrow balance. Now remember from a previous video, the loan escrow account is that separate account that the lender sets up on your behalf. So there's money available to pay property taxes and insurance every year. So remember, as I discussed in a previous video, your monthly mortgage payments are made up of four parts. Principal, interest, that's the money that to pay back the loan to the bank, but then there's taxes and insurance. And the taxes and the insurance part of the payment, that part goes to that loan escrow account each and every month and it just builds up every month. So when it's time to pay property taxes and time to pay your insurance premiums, the money is, is there to do it. Now, sometimes because of rising costs, taxes go up, insurance goes up, there's not enough in the escrow account to pay it. So the lender covers the difference or the shortfall. So that puts your loan escrow account in a negative balance. And so if you close on a transaction or a property that you own and there's a negative loan escrow balance, you have to pay the lender back and that's gonna be paid back at closing. So a loan escrow can be a credit to the seller, but it can also actually be, and I know I don't have it listed on the screen here, but it also can be a cost if it's in a negative balance situation. Same with property taxes. Property taxes can be a credit or a debit to the seller depending on how the state calculates uh, its uh, tax payments. So at closing, the seller may have to come up with money to pay the taxes, You know, make sure that the taxes are paid up as of the day of closing, or they may get a credit. Again, it just depends on how your state calculates property taxes. What are some sample costs or debits that the seller might have to pay? Well, certainly any loans that are against the property, prorated interest. Prorated interest is that uh, interest that the seller owes uh, for the existing mortgage that's on the property. Uh, property taxes, uh, title insurance costs, escrow closing fees, uh, termite inspection. I put that on there because typically the termite inspection is a cost that's paid by the buyer. However, with VA loans, 
Uh, VA requires that the seller pay the buyer's termite inspection. And then you see on the screen repairs, home warranties, attorney's fees, real estate commissions, seller concessions. Uh, what is a seller concession? Well, a seller concession is when the seller is paying some or all of the buyer's closing costs. So for example, the, the, uh, let's, say that the let's say that the buyer is paying $1,000 in discount points. So the, the, the buyer asks the seller to pay that and the seller agrees. That is a seller concession. Anytime the seller is paying some, what is, what is a buyer cost, that is a seller concession. And then we have state transfer tax. Now, the state has figured out how to, how to tax the transfer of title. Every state calls it something different. Common names are state transfer tax, state documentary tax, state uh, conveyance tax. That is a cost to the seller. It's a cost to the seller to transfer title from the seller to the buyer. So those are some typical, most common type of cost to sellers. Now let's see what it looks like on a closing statement or, or on a seller proceed statement, I should say. So here's what a, a typical seller proceed statement would look like. We have three columns. One column is for the item that's being debited or credited to the seller. Then we have the two columns, the debit uh, column and the credit. And then what we do is we identify the item and then which column does that cost go into? Does it go into the debit co or column or the credit column? And as you can see, selling price, that's a credit to the seller. And then look at all the debits that the seller has to pay at closing. We have the loan balance, $100,000 to repay the loan. In this scenario, the, the, um, the seller had to bring the taxes current as of the day of closing, which is 5,000 bucks. Title insurance, real estate commissions, home warranties. We have that VA termite inspection fee. We have the escrow closing fee. Uh, all of those are in the debit com column. Look at the state documentary tax. It's $400. If the test question is gonna make you calculate that, they'll give you enough information so you make the calculation. So it's two, in our scenario here, it's $2 per $1,000. So in our scenario, what we, we would do is we would take $2 and multiply it by 200. So we multiply that out and it comes up to 400 bucks. Then what we do is subtotal each column. So if you were to do the, uh, and I did the math right, I'm pretty sure, you total up the debt column, it's 119,400. The total credit column is 205,000. We do the, we just do the math, 205,000 minus 119,400. That gives us a net proceed of $85,600 to the seller. Now I know there is a typo there. It says 85 comma 6,000. It really is, should be $85,600. Sorry about that. So anyways, that is what a typical um, example of a seller proceeds statement would look like. It's just a matter of identifying, identifying the item and then putting it into the correct column, the debit column or the credit column. So let's take a look at what a, um, a sample real estate exam test question regarding seller proceeds might look like. It says, Tom Seller sold his house for $300,000. He agreed to pay his broker 6% of the sale price for the commission. Tom also agreed to pay for a new roof costing $5,000. Title insurance cost $1,000 and a split equally between the buyer and the seller, but Tom has agreed to pay the buyer's portion. Annual property taxes are $1,200 and Tom owes for nine months. The escrow closing fee is $400 and is split equally between the buyer and the seller. What will be Tom's proceeds from the sale of his home? Okay, that's a very common typical uh, you know, calculation you're gonna have to do. What, here's what I would tell you. A lot of times students see that long word problem, math problem, and they freak out and they get anxiety and it's understandable. But what I teach my students to do is to take each item or each sentence and then just itemize the cost or the credits. And you'll see what I mean in a minute here. The best way to do these problems is to do it sentence by sentence. And, and again, you've seen the spreadsheet back up here. 
you're not going to get a spreadsheet when you go into the exam room and take the exam, but you're going to have scratch paper and a pen. Okay. All you have to do is just make three columns. As you see right on your screen, we have an item column, a debt, and a credit. That's all you have to do as we are going sentence by sentence. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's look at the first sentence here. It says, Tom Seller sold his house for $300,000. Well, that first sentence tells us that the item is sale price and it is an asset or a credit to the seller. So we put $300,000 in the credit column. The next sentence, he agreed to pay his brokers or his brokers 6% of the sale price. That's the real estate commission. Now we have to do a little calculation there. So what, how we calculate that is we take 300,000, we multiply it by six, hit the percent key, and that'll give us $18,000. So Tom is gonna pay his broker $18,000 in commission and that is a debt to the seller. The next sentence, Tom also agreed to pay for a new roof costing $5,000. So that's repair and that is a, that is a debit to the, uh, or a cost to the seller. So we're gonna put it in the debit or cost column. Title insurance cost $1,000. That's the total cost, $1,000. And it is split equally between the buyer and the seller. However, excuse me, Tom agreed to pay the buyer's portion. So normally it's, a, it's split, that $1,000 would be split equally, which would be 500 to the buyer, 500 to the seller. However, Tom Seller agreed to pay the buyer's portion of it, so he's gonna pay the full $1,000 cost. So that is a cost to the seller, so we're gonna put it in that cost column. Annual property taxes are $1,200, and Tom owes for nine months. And we have to do a little calculation here. You can see on the screen it says $900, that we put in the, into the debit column, but how did we get that $900? Well, it's pretty simple. Our annual property taxes, which is 12 months, is $1,200. So we just take $1,200 divided by 12 months, gives us a monthly rate of $100 per month. We take that $100 per month and we multiply it by nine months, that gives us the $900 that you see here on your screen. Okay, that's how we would calculate taxes. And that's a realistic um, calculation example of what you would have on your real estate exam. All right, the next sentence says, the escrow closing fee is $400 and it's split equally between the buyer and seller, which means the total cost is $400, but the buyer and seller are, are paying 50-50 here, so it's 200 to buyer, 200 to the seller. So we put $200 in the, the debit column uh, for the seller. And then finally, what will be the proceeds from, from uh, the sale of the home? Well, we have to then add up the subtotal of each column. So it, when we add up all the cost in the debit column, we get a subtotal of $25,100. When we add up the credit column, it's $300. And how do we find the proceeds? Real simple. We take $300,000, which is the credit. We minus the $25,100 in costs. And that gives us a net seller proceed of $274,900. That's how we calculate a seller proceed. Once again, don't forget, when you first see this math problem, the seller proceed problem, it can be overwhelming because you're like, wow, there's a lot of numbers in there. Again, just take a piece of scratch paper and a pen. You're going to have that available to you in the, in the uh, testing room and go sentence by sentence. And then does it go into the debt column or does it go into the credit column? That's it. all you have to do. Keep it simple. And when you do that, you're going to come up with the right answer. I guarantee you. All right, that's all we have for today's video. I appreciate you hanging out with me. If you're going to continue studying, check out this real estate math video. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Click the little circle to my left. Comments and questions down below. Really like comments and questions. That's all I got for today, guys. I'll see you in the next video.